What is going on guys? In this video, I wanna to talk to you all about code reviews and why code reviews are important for any software developer. Um, so code reviews are the kind of thing that developers either love or they hate. You have certain types of people that love getting code review notifications. Um, they love giving their feedback and nitpicking on things. And then you have other people that hate the code review process. They avoid doing code reviews and just kind of stay away from it in general. And code reviews are invaluable. And for those of you that don't know, code reviews are just the process of, uh, it's a step prior to committing um, your code where you basically submit your code to be reviewed by your peers. They can leave comments, you can have like revisions, you can go back and forth with the comments, uh, put out a new revision once you make the changes, and then once finally things get approved, you finally push your code. Um, but like I said, code reviews are something that people love or hate, but I think that they are invaluable in any software organization. And so if you're not using code reviews already, hopefully by the end of this video, I can convince you why your team should be using code reviews. So I like to think of the benefits of code reviews in two classes of problems. The first is why code reviews are important for your code base to maintain a healthy code base. And the second class of problems is why I think code reviews are great for you as a person to develop your own individual skill sets. Um, so let's take these one by one. Um, so for, for the first section, why I think it's important for your code base, multiple different reasons here. Um, Obviously, it's a great opportunity to catch errors, and these can be all sorts of different types of errors. They could be, you know, logic errors where um, you know you, you did something silly that you didn't really recognize in your code, and something's just flat out wrong. Or maybe there's something that you hadn't considered, so it's not going to work when this actually hits production. It could be edge cases that you didn't consider. Maybe there's certain things about your data flow that you hadn't considered when you made this change. Uh, maybe it's something more subtle and more um, to do with how your application is built. But edge cases are always something great to look out for. Um, could be concurrency. Maybe um, you're using a concurrent application and you haven't considered certain scenarios. Could be a lack of logging. If you're not logging correctly, logging is obviously very, very important uh, for any application to understand what your software is doing at any point in time. Uh, so it's important to ensure that your, your software developers are logging appropriately and where it makes sense. And the fifth one is uh, metrics. Uh, like logging, metrics are very important to understand the health of your system at any point in time. So uh, ensuring that your developers are emitting metrics, especially, especially on new feature launches, is very, very important. So there's all sorts of kind of what I classify as errors that um, you can catch if you're a reviewer of code reviews. And it just it gives you an opportunity to ensure that your code base is staying consistent, staying healthy, um, and the hygiene is being maintained over time. This is key to maintaining uh, code bases that last long periods of time and don't decay or accrue technical debt um, as they, they kind of move forward through time. And the uh, second main reason here that I have is in terms of uh, code style. Um, now I hope most teams have have a standard uh, convention list or code style list. Maybe you're using something like uh, check style, which you can actually embed in your editors and distribute to your team so that everyone has the same styles. Um, but regardless, um, this can be even more um, kind of granular, like in terms of certain libraries that you're using um, or certain kind of features of a language. For example, in Java, um, some people love optionals, some people hate optionals, some people love streams, other people love for loops. It's important to keep it consistent, pick one or the other. By the way, I love streams and I love optionals. Um, but keep it consistent so that if you're approaching your code base later, it's not just like a hot mess of all these sorts of styles that are co-mingling together. Um, that makes it very challenging to read at a later point in time when you come and revisit this stuff. So consistency is key, like anything else in life, uh, so should be your code. The final one is testing, um, ensuring that developers submitting reviews are doing the right level of unit testing, the right level of integration testing. Unit testing in terms of catching all the cases, um, testing different combinations, obviously, and um, maybe there's a case that someone missed, you want to kind of keep an eye out. Or maybe in your experience, you've seen problems repeat itself uh, if there are a certain type of problem. And so you can give some forward-looking guidance to uh, your, your developers that you're reviewing the code review for, and and kind of let them know that something 
this isn't the right way to do things. Um, so that's kind of the first classification of, of um, the benefits of code reviews. Now I wanna move on to why I think code reviews are important for you as an individual. And two main points that I wanna talk about here. Uh, so the first one is that code reviews are a really great opportunity for you to learn as a developer. And this applies equally to um, beginner developers, intermediate developers, and experienced developers. Um, if you're a beginner, Code reviews are great to understand like kind of the tricks of the trade or what people are doing or how they're building their code or how they're writing their code rather. I like to think of an example when I was a, a developer and I was first starting out and um, <laughs> I was building a full stack application at a, an internship that I was doing and doing some JavaScript stuff. I didn't really know much about JavaScript at the time, but I was just doing finding things on Stack Overflow, finding things on GitHub and just making it work, right? And the problem is like, although you can get it working at the end of the day, by the way, we didn't have code reviews there, which is a, was a nightmare. Um, the thing is like, you can get it working, but it's kind of a situation where you don't know what you don't know. So I was doing things like trying to extract the keys out of a, a JavaScript object and I was doing some really funky thing. But there's all sorts of libraries that do this for you, right? And since no one was reviewing my code, this code probably still exists somewhere in that product. Um, you know, I hope no one looks at it and judges me, but it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know. So um, it's unless someone corrects you, unless someone tells you otherwise, or you take it upon yourself and research, um, you're not gonna be able to improve in any way. So they're a great opportunity for beginners to look at code that other developers are producing and saying, oh, that's an interesting tactic or that's an interesting um, construct that they're using. I should try that in my code. It's also a great time for you to get feedback from your peers to say, hey, Daniel, you're doing this wrong or I think this can be improved. By the way, when you're giving feedback on code reviews, don't attack people. Just give them suggestions like this can be improved or have you thought about this? Nothing is worse than feeling like you're attacked when um, you're on the receiving end of a code review. It's like some, some people do that and I'm like, why are you doing that? You're trying to help people. It's about team chemistry, not about making people feel bad. Um, so so make sure that you, you kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And the second point here under this umbrella of why it's important for you as an individual, if you're an experienced developer, Part of your job is teaching your peers how to become better, how to kind of improve their skills. You are a cog in a wheel, right? Teams are not just an individual, they are the sum of, of many individuals working together as a cohesive unit. So taking the time as an experienced developer to give feedback, to analyze code reviews and kind of talk to your, your peers that are under you um, is great for you to kind of exercise your ability to be a leader, but also to develop those relationships with those intermediate and beginner developers that are still trying to find their path and still trying to find your way. So if you're in a more experienced developer or even intermediate, make sure that you're doing code reviews. It's important to give feedback to the youngins or the people that are, are just starting out. So hopefully I've convinced you as to why code reviews are important. And if you're not already doing code reviews, then I suggest you start. There's some great tools out there. Uh, I can integrate with Git. There's one called Review Board. Uh, Crucible is another one that's built by Atlassian. A um, whole bunch of open source products for um, you to take advantage of in the code review world. Uh, so I hope you found this video useful and you'll start code reviewing. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much guys. I'll see you next time.